Hey everybody, welcome back to A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. Geo here, and today we're going to be talking about a brand new manga that I just read and actually want to share my review with you guys. Of course, I'm going to let the camera do its thing so you can see my tablet here. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. This is a manga published by Square Enix and it is based on a light novel by Kisetsu Morita and with new art by Yusuke Shiba and character design by Benio. He worked on the light novel if I remember correctly. So this is volume one and you're probably wondering what the heck is this title? First and foremost, we gotta do something about those names. I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level. Okay, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Sure, why not? That time I reincarnated as a sword. Do you love my mom and her two-pronged attack? What I'm getting at is that all of these series, whether they be manga, light novels, or even anime, the names are extremely long and it shouldn't be this way. Just call it Killing Slimes. It, I'm comfortable with that, so we'll just refer to it as Killing Slimes. Okay, so with all of that said, what is this story about? Because you're probably wondering, killing slimes, 300 years, what? This is a slice of life, comedic isekai story. If you don't know what isekai means, basically out of world where you have typically power fantasies and you have ideal characters that get, um, they either die or get reincarnated or get transported to a fantasy type world where they get to start over with, you know, medieval-esque elements or RPGs, MMOs, gaming mechanics, that kind of thing. There's an overabundance of isekai and it takes a certain gimmick for me to actually watch it. Like, reincarnated as a slime, that was pretty cool. You know, slimes typically in the um, RPG world, they are the weakest of the weak when it comes to monster hunting and all that stuff. So when you have a character that's reborn as a slime, you go, huh, I wonder how that's gonna work out. And it leads to different things, even though they share tropes with every single other isekai or every other anime or manga or whatever medium it is that you're consuming. So with this one, Killing Slimes, we are following the character of Asusa, who tragically uh, dies uh, from overworking, which is a real thing that happens in, uh, specifically for the manga, that happens in Japan. It's a real thing that you can check out right now. You can Google it and, and learn about uh, that whole ordeal. So Azusa dies from overworking, and then she finds herself in the next life, in the afterlife, I guess, and this angel, offers her the opportunity to be reborn into a new world. Uh, she, all that she wishes for is that, uh, the character I mean, is to be reborn immortal. And so the angel grants her immortality of sorts. It's kind of vague the way they phrase it, basically saying an unaging witch, not technically an immortal witch. So she is reborn uh, as a 17 year old looking witch in this countryside of a fantasy world and all the monsters that inhabit this countryside this hill that she appears are slime creatures and if you've seen slime creatures uh you know let me do the whole camera thing again you can see the slime down below and the one she's holding they don't do much they just jump around and i guess eat random stuff off the ground. I don't know. I don't know what slime do. So basically what happens is that the character of Azusa, she wants to live this new life as carefree as possible. The only amount of work that she does is basic field work because she gets a, like a cabin house, if you will, and she's tending to the field and getting stuff to eat, vegetables and stuff like that, and of course, hunting down the easiest targets available, which happen to be slime creatures. So after centuries of doing that one easy task, she ends up extremely overpowered with magical abilities, a, a ton of spells, and 
uh, abilities. She's super strong, and from a level one, she's basically a, a level 99 caster witch, and she's quite famous. Word starts leaking out, and everybody knows that this town has a really badass, extremely powerful witch, and it just gets funnier from there because now the whole townspeople and the whole world they start learning about her and want to come and challenge her to fights and all that stuff so what happens when an overpowered person now is in the limelight and could possibly no longer live her stress-free life that she wanted so yeah that in a nutshell is killing slimes etc etc I love the artwork. I love the character design. I think Azusa looks uh, extremely adorable. I love the witch hat. I I've always been a fan when they do character designs like that, where you have a slim character and she has a witch hat, and it's super big. I, I find that really cool. Uh, Azusa and characters like Megumin and Konosuba, stuff like that. At the end of the day, this story is more wholesome than it seems. You might be thinking, oh, it's an isekai, it's gonna play with tropes, it's stuff I've already uh, know about, there's no reason to get into that stuff, but I would generally disagree. I like the character models, I think they look really cute. It's simple, but nice. It, it doesn't feel stocky or badly drawn in any way. It's not super outlandish or, or memorable, but at the same time, it just works for the leisure feel that this book has. I wish the art style could be a little bit darker, uh, the, the gray tones and stuff. It's, it's lighter. It looks... Uh, it doesn't have as many shadows and detailed stuff as I would like in other manga like this with fantasy elements and stuff. Because there are creatures, we do see slime creatures and, and dragons and uh, magic attacks and all that stuff so it's not technically a full-blown fantasy series where there's this grand epic quest uh, to get uh, the treasure or save a particular person it's just literally about somebody that died from overworking and gets a second life in this other world and is living her fantasy of just chillaxing at her home she just happens to be extremely overpowered which i found find uh extremely hilarious later on the story does uh evolve somewhat and i don't want to get into too much spoilers because i don't do spoilers on this channel uh eventually she meets uh more characters that befriend her under different circumstances so she is forced to confront the fact that you know, as much as you want to be lazy, there comes a point in time in your life where you're just forced to interact with people and form actual wonderful human relations, if you will. So that clash of ideology I thought was re really cool. There's this scene um, that I can't specify uh, how it comes about, but basically she is telling to you know never judge yourself based on others approval do what you want to do as long as you hold on to that feeling you can keep going and your level will go up by itself which you know i get it it's a reference to video game stuff but at the same time it's a nice simple life lesson that a lot of people can take to heart i don't know if you guys have read I've been killing slimes for 300 years and maxed out my level, but I think if you're in the mood for some uh, slice of life comedy with a power uh, fantasy isekai thing, I think you're gonna have a fun time with it. I certainly did. I enjoy these type of series. It can, um, can sort of whisk you away from your problems and relax you for a couple uh, minutes while you're reading this and transport you to another world like the characters and you have fun. It's it's more comedic in nature and I genuinely enjoyed it. I think Azusa is a funny character and there are some really hilarious interactions between her and other adventurers that, you know, uh, appear in the book, which I thought made the experience 
more wholesome uh, and fun for the reader as well. So if you've read the book, let me know down below. And if you're an Isekai fan, which I know there are a lot of you out there, let me know which Isekai manga is your favorite. Very interested in finding out. <laughs> Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for liking, commenting, and being a part of We Can Geek Them when you subscribe. That really cheers me up. Thank you so much. Hit the little bell icon so you know when new videos pop up. Follow me on social media. All that stuff. I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next video. Thank you.